Hello and welcome to another edition of the e-commerce Odyssey podcast. Um, today we're going to ask the question how e-commerce companies can boost their profits through subscriptions. And to help us with that, we're very pleased to be joined by Matt Holman from QPilot, who specialise in um, helping companies run subscriptions online. So my first question to you, Matthew, is what is a subscription in the kind of e-commerce context? Sure. I think there's a couple. Um, I, I'm sure most people are familiar with the Netflix and Amazon subscriptions, but when we're talking about e-commerce, there's typically a couple. One is thinking about a membership option. People are subscribing to a membership so that they can get certain perks or benefits from uh, your business. But kind of the core one that I deal with a lot and we work with a lot is comes down to physical goods. So somebody's buying something from you on a repeat basis. It's typically like on a monthly basis or weekly basis, they're getting it shipped to them regularly and consuming your product regularly. Okay, so what kind of products do subscriptions work best for? Yeah, so I think the most common ones you'll see are related to consumables, but this can be basically something that's being used regularly. So a lot of them are health and wellness supplements, things like protein powders and vitamins. Dog food is really popular. CBD is growing um, really, really quickly. Uh, fresh food actually is a growing space as well from a subscription standpoint. So, um, and then sometimes you can have beauty products and other things in there. So basically something that somebody's using, if not on a daily basis, then at least fairly regularly. So it's something that they would be shopping for regularly. And so a subscription kind of takes them out of that mode of having to shop for your a product like yours over and over again, because they're getting it delivered to them automatically. Okay. So subscriptions, I mean, because obviously I noticed on Amazon start off subscriptions, it, it, subscription is becoming a, 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 a larger part of e-commerce. Yes, it's actually growing like uh, some of the numbers I've seen recently that they're expecting like a four or 500% increase over the, just the next couple of years in subscription physical products, not just digital. Um, and Amazon's actually been doing it for a long time. It's just something that uh, it's grown as a movement. Uh, there's a lot of people, they, they say there's like a subscription fatigue. Some people are kind of tired of it, but uh, I think actually technology and customer experience are innovating around of it and finding ways to continue to improve it. Um, Cause really it's all about, if we're talking subscriptions, we're really talking about customer engagement and how can you keep a stronger and tighter relationship with your customers? So you've obviously got different, I mean, what are the different options you have for, for um, subscriptions? Cause you have companies that offer, you know, as you say, things like pet food and stuff, I can see them being working on a subscription, but what about these kind of um, subscription um, boxes where, you know, like a box of, a box of, um, in fresh fruit that you get once a week right. or, you know, a, a toy box subscription. Do they, do they also work? Yes, they do really, really well. Um, actually last week I was at a uh, sub summit, which is a subscription trade conference and 80% of the attendees there are all doing subscription boxes. So that's another form of subscriptions where you're essentially relying on a customer experience. You're going to send them a certain type of products. They get that, you know, say they want to try out a different, uh, like a really popular one to say butcher box where you're getting different types of meats every month or battle box is one that I really like. They send you a lot of outdoor supplies so you can try different things, get different products. Um, it's a way to kind of introduce the consumer to a different, like an experience more so than just getting a, a product that they use regularly. Okay. So can I mean, can you, getting on to the next thing is how to run, next question is how to launch a successful subscription um, program. So what do you think are the steps that, I mean, okay, so we take my, you know, I always like to use my business as an example there. We yeah. sell things like toys. We, we do lots of nursery stuff, lots of preschool things. Um, we have a range of toys. We've also got, you know, feeding things, a whole range of kind of baby products. Is there a company like mine, what should we, what would it be the steps we should take to, launch a successful subscription well, product? Sure. I think step one is thinking about what are additional ways I can add value for the consumer. So I would ask questions like, are there certain things that people are buying on repeat already? Are they buying a certain toy that gets destroyed? Is that certain types of clothes or baby formula? Are, are there anything you're selling right now that people are coming back to buy more than once? That's question one. Question two would be, is there something that they need that another product you could offer that would be a, a, a good offering? For example, if you're not doing baby formula already, but you're selling toys, do you have interest from your customers for baby formula or another type of consumable that you can offer to them? Um, you know, you know, kids grow and change, right? Like they grow over time. So something, if you're selling them clothes, maybe a clothes subscription 
based off of their size as they grow that changes progressively over time would be an interesting idea. So, so really the, the start is understanding your consumer, your customer, what they want, and is there something that they're getting somewhere else that you could be offering them? That would be kind of be step one. Um, so I'm really glad you use that as an example because otherwise it's really easy to think, oh, I sell pet food. I should sell that on a subscription because people use pet food all the time, but not every business is like an obvious fit for subscriptions right away. And even ones that are seem like an obvious fit. I do like to ask that. Why would your customers want to buy this from you? Because if you don't know that it's hard to sell, it's really hard to sell a subscription. So do you think you need a unique product? Is it, does it need to be a, no. I think it comes down to branding. Like it, again, pet food is as an example. There are a lot of ways to buy pet food. You know, you can go to your local PetSmart, Petco. Um, you can buy online. There's regional, national, and international distributors. There's tons of product out there, but people still buy pet food online and they buy it on a subscription because of branding, because of they believe in the supplier, they believe in the you know the the makeup or the mix or the flavor or the mission behind those behind those things. So. So that ultimately that's kind of comes back to that initial question is knowing your consumers. If you have a strong brand, people are going to be willing to buy you because subscriptions involve trust. And so there needs to be a compelling reason for why people are going to want to buy from you, just like they would one-time products. Why would they keep buying that over and over from you on a subscription? Okay. So what's it? Okay. Right, so launching a subscription, what, what, what are the next, what's the next step in launching a program? Sure. So once you have a general idea of kind of what you're trying to offer, it comes down to uh, evaluating software. So like for anybody on Shopify, there are, I mean, last time I checked, there's like 30 plus different subscription plugins, but there's say a core group of ones that are kind of innovating and leading the charge. Um, but really you, you want to outline what your basic steps are. And so that comes down to understanding like are how often is the frequency? Are people going to get it once a month, once a week, every three months, um, understanding how, uh, are you going to offer discounts? Um, is it something that can change? Like, are you trying to make it so that people can change when they're getting it or the products they're getting? So there's certain aspects of a subscription program that you need to kind of have defined in your mind of what you want so that when you go to evaluate different plugins, you can see, oh, well, this plugin checks all my boxes or, or this one doesn't because some of them have different strengths and different weaknesses. Um, for ours, particularly QPilot, we're integrated with WooCommerce and we're really good at flexibility. So if you're looking at a, a subscription option that is really easy to change, that's great. If you're doing a subscription box, we're overkill for you, for example. So like, that's kind of like that mentality you want. You have, want to have a strong understanding of your offering. You want to have a strong understanding of what you want people to be able to do on a subscription. And then you want to choose a plugin or an app that matches that criteria so that you can then launch and start testing, um, acquiring customers and how the management works. Okay. So what, what is the best way to promote a subscription scheme? Um, cause well, it, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, go on. No, I mean, that's a great question. I think it comes down to first looking at existing traffic sources so and, and product page design. So um, if you're talking about, um, say, your site selling, you know, kids toys and things like that, um, being able to have a product page specific to that, that highlights the benefits. There's certain questions related to like, you know, what is a, how does a subscription work? How easily can I cancel it? So we're talking about copy related to uh, you know, easing people's uh, worries about how a subscription might work. But ultimately, I would start with product page design and outline the benefits of the subscription, why it's important to have it, because a lot of people are going to ask, like, why should I buy this on a repeat when I could just buy it one time when I need it? Um, and then if you are looking at having, a, if you have a strong tie back into your brand, so for example, um, pet food, uh, a customer that I work with is I Heart Dogs. They donate a portion of all of their uh, purchases go to feeding pets in shelters. Um, so when they're advertising their products and their program, they're highlighting that as a feature as well. Part mm -hmm. of their brand is important and you're getting it on a, re on a subscription basis. So it's not just about buying it one time. It's about buying your dog the food they need and benefiting other, other pets um, across the country, across the world. So it, it really just comes into how you're messaging and framing your offer, but, but looking at how you're currently driving traffic to you, the rest of your site. Okay. So what about in terms of promoting? So let's see, that's the, the, the page on the website. But I mean, do people use um, you know, Google, Google shopping, Google, you know, right. uh, Facebook ads, and what kind of 
economic model should people use? Because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that that's, um, the cost of acquiring a customer to buy a subscription model is probably higher than a one-time purchase. Yes and no. I, I mean, honestly, if you already have an existing business, you can look at like the first place to start is looking at your existing customers to see who's already buying MVP. It's just doing a quick audit of returning customers and you could actually market an offer to them right away. Hey, I've noticed you bought this three times already. Here's a 10% coupon if you want to sign up for a subscription. So uh, another big question with that is like offering is, is discounts. I suggest to every business that they should do no more than 10% discount to start because you don't want to give away the farm if you don't have to. Um, you should focus instead on writing compelling copy and uh, around why people should be buying it. And then you can use extra incentives over time, or you can test with doing extra discounts. So you do have to know your unit economics of your cost to acquire a customer. If you can't afford to give 10% off on a subscription, um, you know, that's, you either need to rate, you know, increase prices or, or consider your acquisition model because that, you know, 10% is not very much. Right. Yeah. It's not, but some people it can make margins really, really tight. But the idea with the subscription is that in time, over five, six months. So the average subscription is gonna run four or five months, maybe maybe a little bit longer than that, depending. I see shorter and I see longer, but say for average, you're gonna get somebody to buy something six more times from you. Okay. So there's a lot of profitability there if you're willing to acquire that customer, if you can get break even on that first purchase um, or even profitable or cl close, you can make it more lucrative over time. But again, that comes down to understanding why people are buying and then why people are canceling. So any good launch of a program, you need to be asking people why they're choosing the subscription versus not, whether you're doing emails or surveys or direct outreach. And then you want a cancellation pop-up that's trying to grab information from people when they go to cancel, asking them why. Is it too much product? Is they didn't like it? You know, um, circling back to that I Heart Dogs one, uh, it's a really common problem where people have too much on a subscription. They were getting told that people had too much, but they were also finding out that people didn't know how much to order. So they went back and redesigned their product page with steps on, depending on the size of your pet, this is how much food you should buy and how often you should buy it. So they made that a little bit easier to understand and it boosted their conversions by 20% and it boosted their LT, the number of times people were staying on a subscription. So just understanding the consumer, understanding what they're buying, what they're looking for, what roadblocks, that's where scale gets unlocked on a subscription program. Should companies, um, should it make it simple by having a single subscription offer or it's multiple, multiple subscription offers work? Do you mean like on different products? Is that what, what I mean? Is okay. So obviously, if you've got like you know, you could have a subscription offer by different you know for each different type of pet food, um, or you could say you're selling a subscription box, or you're right. a company that does you know does um, you know fruit boxes or something once a week. Should you keep it simple by having a single you know simple or, or you know or have more options so people can choose? So the the benefit of having more options to choose is if anybody's buying anything on your site already. They could potentially you could potentially turn them into a subscriber, you know, even if they're buying a less popular product. Um, so technology makes it fairly easy to if you have a deep SKU count, you could you could turn on subscriptions across your entire catalog on your Shopify site, right? Or across your whole website. I, I think it comes down to understanding again, like uh what's your brand positioning if you're worried about like you want something you want to promote. Um, I usually will recommend somebody like we're talking about acquisition, if you have a, a flagship product, right? Like, you know, if you have a one or two products that do heads down better than the rest of your store, you could maybe turn on subscriptions for everything else, but those one or two products is where I would start where I'm going to really experiment with acquisition, product page design, offers. I'm really going to be focused on that product or those one or two products to see if I can really boost a subscriptions because they're already my most popular products. So I'm already getting good traffic and it's a good opportunity to test. If, if it's a brand experience and you're getting feedback from customers that like, Hey, I'd actually be interested in trying more stuff, or I'm, I'm interested more about how this kind of works then looking at a subscription box offering can be really appealing because then you could actually take other products that you know of that you like and include them in boxes so that people can get introduced to other things. Okay. So what is the best way to um, boost conversions of uh, a subscription? 
Yeah, I think the the primary thing is is you know we're talking product page design because that's where you know people you know sales are are, are made or lost right there is. Uh, understanding the reasons why people are buying your product. And so as a marketer, I'm always stressing the power of good copy, right? Writing a compelling message on why this product is beneficial, not just the hot, the features, but what you get out of it. Um, so if you're selling something that, you know, again, say, let's take the kids clothes example. Um, you know, how annoying is it to realize that your kid has outgrown their clothes, and you have to go shopping for new ones. Well, we already, we're going to send you clothes ahead of time. Cause we're going to track the, the we're, we're going to keep a timeline on your kids growth, right? So kids grow average, you know, and so we're going to send you clothes ahead of time and you can return anything you don't like. So it's like, oh, we're trying to get ahead of a potential pain point for people um, with pet food, right? It's like, you know, you shouldn't need to be shopping for this. Make sure your pet never runs out. Uh, we have additional offers or products, you know, it's really about trying to understand the reason why people are buying in the first place and doubling down on that. And then um, the same thing is like I was mentioning with surveying customers, why they buy and then surveying why they cancel and seeing if you can address some of those um, both good and bad reasons why you're gaining or losing customers and, and implementing that as copy as well. Um, is, is I think the best way to approach it then uh, after that, you can start playing with, uh, I think, additional things around uh, discounts. Um, you know, say like you start with 10%, you could run a special at 20% over a weekend or over a long haul, drastic increase on conversions or not. And if it's worth it, if the profitability of your unit economics makes sense, you could run that periodically as a special to try to boost um, your, your conversions as well. Okay. What about reducing churn? So yeah, churn. first explain what is churn. A bit yeah, so churn is, is how you're losing customers over time. So um, I know a really common, like, you know, somebody subscribes and they cancel essentially. So there's kind of, there's two types of churn. There's churn where the customer is choosing to cancel. And then there's churn, what we call passive churn, which is like, you know, a customer doesn't realize their credit card expired or, you know, they, cha- they moved and the address didn't get updated in their bank. And so now their, their credit card's failing. So the, on the latter, on passive churn, there's uh, some just basic software up. They'll try to make the passive churn a lot less, but for active churn, and that's when a customer is basically telling you they don't want it anymore. Um, you you want to be grabbing that information related to why why they're canceling. So, for example, one of the most common reasons people cancel is because they have too much of something. And so you need to be able to try to meter or, or explain how usage works. And that comes back to conversions on the product page. If you're selling a sleep supplement that you should take every night, uh, what happens when people skip and now they have too many? So making it easy for customers to pause or to push their uh, next to current state out is a good way to overcome that as a problem. If somebody's like, say they're tired of it, then maybe you need to try uh, throwing in some gifts or some other options on the life of the subscription so that they'll try different products or different flavors, for example. So that way you can try to keep that engagement going with people. But it really comes down to knowing your problem. And then uh, there are there are ways to address all those like examples I just listed. Okay, so can you give me an example of two, give me two examples. Give me an example of a subscription scheme that really worked. And perhaps one that failed, and perhaps give you the reasons why. You can use anonymous. You can anonymize if you like. Yeah. Anyway. So let's let's go with uh, ones that really really work. Um, I I love uh, one of our customers is called Legion Athletics. And they sell supplements, and they have a really really deep. Uh, they have a lot of different SKUs, and so there's a level of complexity in what they're offering. However, their checkout has been customized over time with bundles and upsell options. So it's really easy. They default to a subscription that helps with conversions as well. Um, And then they are automatically upselling different products and different offerings. But this comes back to, again, that kind of like this core premise. They know that if you're buying a, a workout supplement, there are other supplements you'll probably be interested in, right? If I'm trying to lose weight and I'm buying protein powder, I'll probably be interested in a fat burning supplement, right? Or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, glutamine, that kind of thing. So they're already knowing their common purchase patterns and they're recommending products based on that and knowing what their customers like and how to kind of deal with that. And then they're, uh, they have a really solid core group of people that just love their product and stick around for a long time. They do get a lot of people that come in and try things and leave. 
And a lot of businesses sometimes get caught up with like, I want to stop that from happening. But I think like in most cases, you want people to try your products and you're going to find people that are loyal. So that's a really great example of a program. They're doing really, really well. They scale, they do upsells, they have great customer experience. Um, They're doing really, really well. Does it annoy people if they automatically get signed up for a subscription or the, it's the default option? That would annoy me. Uh, yes, it can be, but it's also the power, like there's a psychology element of the opt in, opt out. So like, for example, you know, like donor cards, right? When they yeah. ask you if you're, you know, people don't like, you know, I know it's like that tip thing. You don't, people don't like being defaulted into a tip, but uh, it does help with conversions. If people are looking at the product, it does you should test it. I'm not saying everybody, it's going to be the case for everybody, but from what I've seen, the data that we've seen, it does boost your conversions by sometimes as much as 20 or 30%. Okay. So it can be a, a big bump. Um, programs that do really, really badly, I think, uh, you know, thinking of a couple specific examples um, that I will not share. <laughs> <laughs> Is, it is, uh, I, I think it's, it, it's because they try to be too complex. They be too, they're trying to be too cute. So for example, you might see some really massive like Dollar Shave Club or these really big subscription boxes that are doing hundreds of million in revenue and they have a really sophisticated survey and experience and all these things. When you're a smaller brand, you're doing 5 million in revenue or, or and you're thinking that's what I need to craft for a subscription experience. I've seen so many brands that fall flat on their face because they are not actually getting information from the consumer about what they want. And, and like in everything, I'm a, I'm a data guy. I, you, you, if you have an, a belief or a theory on, Hey, I think my customers would like this on a subscription. What's the easiest way for you to test that and start offering that and getting feedback on that instead of spending tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars and in innovating and developing a technology and an AI and all these things. Can you just curate it personally for a little while? Can you just ask people to email you their preferences? You know what I mean? There's a minimum viable product MVP. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you want to try to dip your toe in the water and start testing these theories. And again, if, if even if you just have a basic product, and, and I don't mean to say like basic, I just mean like something that obviously would do well on a subscription, like say you're selling CBD. You know, you want to get feedback from people on how they're using it, what they care about, what problems it's solving for them, because your one-time users and your subscribers are going to care about it the same way, but your subscribers, you want to find out why is it important for you to have this on a subscription? For me, myself personally, I have a CBD subscription for sleep because I don't want to run out. If I run out, if I don't realize that I don't have enough, I'm going to have a night or two of bad sleep. That's really important to me. So I'm willing to have a little bit extra on hand or have my subscription come early because I, I don't mind having a little bit extra, but you know, a different product might be different. A different brand might be different. So you want to collect data and, and, and don't again. So it's, you don't want to build this huge fancy palace and have nobody live in it. Okay. You know? So what are the absolute kind of no nos of subscription schemes? And I'm guessing not delivering things on time, for example, what are the yeah. things that are absolutely will kill it? Uh, oh, yeah, just, just... hiding hiding cancel buttons, making it hard for people to cancel or churn. Uh, you'll see some short term gains sh- for sure. Uh, you'll see some good revenue numbers, but over time, that'll kill your program. People will start to hate it, um, and you'll lose people. Um, that's a huge no no. Um, there's currently a bit of a two schools of thought around notifications. I know brands that will turn off notifications that the email that the order is about to process because. If people get the notification, they're more likely to cancel. Um, but I think that's a no-no as well, because again, you're kind of short-circuiting. It's a little short-sighted in that um, if you're relying on customers to forget that they have your product coming, you're maybe setting yourself up for failure. But there's also a lot of laws that are coming out related to subscriptions, like California's passing a law in July where you can't have uh, you can't put people through hoops. Like if they want to cancel, you can't make them ask all these questions or give them all these offers to try to keep them. You have to make it simple. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the basic way I would approach it. And then the other thing I would say is a tip is usage. The other biggest hurdle in subscriptions is people have too much product. So does that, if you have a, if you have a product that I know you might think it's obvious how the usage works, you know, again, something that's supposed to be taken every day. There's 30 pills in a bottle. If you're taking it once a day, that means you get a bottle every month. I know that sounds obvious, but putting on the product page, 
this is how much you're getting and how much you need and how much you should be using. That's, um, that's really, really critical. So I would do that as well as a tip to get started. Maybe a little calculator or something like that. Exactly. Those, you shouldn't, those shouldn't, ones trust, are fun. shouldn't trust people's maths. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. Right. So what is, um, the best, you know, in, you know, in terms of platforms to, to run, um, subscription schemes. I mean, I know you obviously you, you know, there's, there's the big, obviously yes. you need an e-commerce platform first, you're going to need a Shopify or a WooCommerce you say, and then you'll need something like a, a, Q, a Q pilot, for example. Right. Yeah. So within WooCommerce, uh, you know, very shameless plug. I don't see a, a great all competitive product to what we do from a subscription standpoint. If you're doing subscription boxes, we're overkill, but if you're trying to sell, a repeat subscription um, were a great option. We will be on Shopify later this summer, but platform wise, Shopify is the easiest place to launch a store or manage a store. WooCommerce, I only recommend WooCommerce to people when there's a very compelling reason for customization um, because it's a different beast when it comes to management. Big Commerce is a good option, but Big Commerce does not have as many software options. The, the beautiful thing about Shopify is there are tons of, of really great apps being developed there. So Recharge is the biggest one in the space. Um, bold subscriptions is really great if you're running memberships or boxes or doing the uh, subscribe options. And then there's a couple others. One that's fairly new that I've seen that I really like is called Atomic as well. So those are those are three the three apps I would start at looking at if I was on Shopify and doing subscriptions. Okay, great. So look, I've got. I think we've learned a lot about subscriptions here. It's been very interesting. But I have one last question I like to ask people: a fluffy question at the end. What has inspired you recently? Have you read any good books? Have you seen any good films? Have you been anywhere interesting? Give us a tip. Uh, well, I mean, I've certainly seen that new Top Gun movie. That's pretty exciting. But there you um, go. is it good? <laughs> for me, uh, for me, community is really inspiring. Um, uh, connecting with other brands and seeing the the hurdles and people that are overcoming and just finding ways to connect with people. And uh, you know, there's potentially a recession. People are worried about that. I think for me, it's. A lot of good people are concerned, but we're all trying to figure out ways to add value. Um, and so for me, that's always inspiring. Excellent. Matthew, it's been lovely speaking to you. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you.